draw lines to join all the pairs of number cards which have a difference of 30. One has been done for you. So we need to remember that the difference is what we get when we subtract. So 170 have a difference of 30 because 100 minus 70 is 30. So we can match 150 and 180. That's because 180 minus 150 is 30, so that's the difference. Now we can match 200 and 170 because 200 minus 170 is 30. We can have 250 and 220 because 220 is 30 less, so has a difference of 30 with 250. And then we can match 300 and 330. Circle three numbers that add to make a multiple of 10. So a multiple of 10 is a number in the 10 times table, and all multiples of 10 end in a zero. So the ones digits of the numbers that we circle need to add up to 10 or 20 so that the number ends in a zero. So we could have 11, 12 and 17. 1 plus 2 plus 7 is 10, so our number will end in a zero. And 11 plus 12 plus 17 is 40. We could also have 11, 13 and 16. 11, 14 and 15. 12, 13 and 15. We could have 13, 18 and 19 because that gives us 50 altogether. And if we look at the ones digits, 3 plus 8 plus 9 is 20, so our number will end in a zero. We could have 14, 17 and 19, 15, 16 and 19, or 15, 17 and 18. Robbie collected information about the colours of some bikes. Here are his results. This bar graph shows the information from the table. Fill in all the missing labels. So from the table, we can see that the largest number of bikes is 12, and that's the colour blue. So that means the largest bar on our bar graph must represent the colour blue. Then the next largest is 7, and that's red bikes. So our next largest bar will be for the colour red. Then we have four bikes that are green, so that will be this bar here. And then the smallest number of bikes is three, and that's for the colour pink. So the smallest bar on our bar graph will represent pink bikes. But now we need to fill in these numbers at the side. We know that there are 12 blue bikes, but for the bar that's blue, we go up one, two, three, four, Five, six. So we know that we're not going up in ones with each line. We must be going up in twos because we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. We have a total of twelve bikes that are blue, and if we're splitting that between six lines, twelve divided by six is two, so that's an increase of two with each line. And then we can check that it works because our green bar shows four bikes, and we can see from the table that for the colour green, the number of bikes is four. These are the radio programmes one morning. Josh turns the radio on at 7.25am. How many minutes does he have to wait for the weather report? Well, we can see that the weather report is at 755 so if he turns the radio on at 7.25, 25 plus 30 is 55, so that means he has to wait 30 minutes. Now, the holiday program lasts for 40 minutes. At what time does the holiday program finish? Well, we can see that it starts at 8.45, so we need to add 40 minutes, and to do that, we can use a timeline. 
So it starts at 8.45, and now we can think how many minutes will take us to the next hour, so take us to 9 o'clock. Well, 45 plus 15 is 60, and there are 60 minutes in an hour, so 15 minutes will take us to 9 o'clock, but that's adding 15 minutes, and we need to add 40. So we need to add another 25 minutes, because 15 plus 25 makes 40. So 9 o'clock plus 25 minutes is 9.25. So that's the time when the holiday program finishes. Calculate 56 divided by 4. So here we can use short division. 5 divided by 4 is 1 remainder 1, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. So our answer is 14. Here are some shaded shapes on a square grid. Write the letters of the two shapes which are hexagons. So remember, a hexagon is a six-sided shape. So what we need to do for this part of the question is just count the sides. So A has four sides, B has six, so that's one of our hexagons, C has five, so that's a pentagon, D has six sides altogether, so that's our other hexagon, and then E has five sides, so that's a pentagon. Now, write the letters of the two shapes which have right angles. So remember, a right angle is a 90 degree angle, and that's the same size as the corner of a piece of paper, or the corner of this screen. Now, A doesn't have any angles that look like they might be right angles. We've got two obtuse angles and two acute angles. Now, if we look at B, this angle here perhaps you think might be a right angle, but it's not, and the way that we know it's not is by counting lines down and across. So if we go down and across this way, we go one down and one across to get to the line, so that's looking good, but if we go down and across the other way, we go down one but across two to get to the line. So, this angle here is not a right angle. Now, if we look at shape C, this angle here at the top looks like it might be a right angle, and we can go down 2 and across 2 to get to the line, and in the other direction, again, down 2 and across 2. So, we're going down and across by the same number of squares to get to the line, or we could go down 1 across 1, down 1, across 1, so this angle here is a right angle. So C is one of our shapes, but there's another shape which has a right angle as well. And this one, we can see clearly this angle here is a right angle, so shape E is our other shape which has a right angle. A shop sells candles. Sapna buys four star candles and two stripe candles. How much does she pay altogether? So we can find the cost of four star candles, then find the cost of two stripe candles, and then add those costs together. So star candles are 60 pence each, and she buys four, so we can work out that 60 pence times four is two pounds 40. And stripe candles cost 85 pence each, and she buys two, so 85 pence times two is one pound 70. So we know that she spends two pounds 40 on star candles, and one pound 70 on stripe candles, so we can add those to find how much she pays altogether, and that comes to four pounds 10. Special offer, Buy 10 candles and get 50 pence off. Josh buys 10 plain candles in the special offer. How much does he pay for the 10 candles? So we can see that plain candles are 35 pence each. So if he buys 10, 35 pence times 10 is £3.50. But because he's bought 10, he can get 50 pence off and £3.50 
minus 50 pence is 3 pounds. So that's how much he pays for the 10 candles. Calculate 1202 plus 45 plus 367. So we can add numbers in any order, but if we start with 1202 plus 45, that gives us 1247, and then we can add 367 to that answer. So 7 plus 7 is 14, so 1, 4. 1 plus 4 plus 6 is 11, so 1, 1. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, and 1 plus nothing is 1. So that gives us 1,614. Here are some digit cards. We have 2, 4, 6 and 6. Write all the three digit numbers greater than 500 that can be made using these cards. One has been done for you. So let's start by making the largest number possible. So we could have 6 in our hundreds, 6 in our tens, and 4 in our ones, so 664. The next largest number we can make is 662. Then we can have 646, 642, and then our next largest number is written for us, because that's 626 but we could also have 624. So that's all the numbers that we can make that are greater than 500. So we can't use the 4 or the 2 as our hundreds digit, because if we do that, we'll make numbers that are less than, not greater than 500. Tick the two numbers which have a total of 10. So here we can see that we have decimal numbers. But remember, we can write a decimal point and then zeros on the end of a whole number. So we can think of 10 as being 10.00. And that makes it easier to see that the numbers that we need are 0 0.01 and 9.99. Now we know that 999 plus 1 is 1000. So that means 9.99 plus 0 0.01 will be 10.00, which is the same as 10. And to check, we could use column addition, and we can see that we get 10.00, so 10. Now with 0 0.11, we would need 9.89 to make a total of 10. For 1.01, .01, we would need 8.99. For 9.09, .09, we would need 0 0.91 to make 10. And for 9.9, .9, we would need 0 0.1. Not 0 0.01, just 0 0.1. So 1 tenth, not 1 hundredth. The diagram is made of squares. What fraction of the diagram is shaded? So with fractions, the numerator or top part tells us how many equal parts we have, and the denominator tells us how many equal parts there are altogether. But in this diagram, we don't have equal parts. This shaded square here is bigger than all of our other shaded squares. But what we can do is split it up. If we split this big square into four small squares, then all of our squares are the same size. So now we have equal parts, so we can see that we have five equal parts shaded, and nine equal parts all together, so that means our fraction that's shaded is five ninths. Write the correct sign, greater than, less than, or equal to, in each of the following. So here we have calculations with brackets. So we need to remember that we always do what's in the brackets first. So here we have 10 plus 5, so 15, minus 9 
is 6. And here we have 10 plus 9, so that's 19, minus 5 is 14. 6 is less than 14, so we need a less than sign. Now 3 times 4 plus 5, but 4 plus 5 is in brackets, so we need to do that first. 4 plus 5 is 9, and 3 times 9 is 27. Now we have 3 times 4 in brackets, so that's 12 plus 5 is 17. So 27 is greater than 17. And now 10 times 4 is in brackets, so we do that first. 10 times 4 is 40, and 40 divided by 2 is 20. Now here it's 4 divided by 2 in brackets, so we need to do this first. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 times 2 is 20, so we need an equal sign because we have the same value on both sides. Here is part of a shape on a square grid. Draw two more lines to make a shape which has a line of symmetry. So if a shape has a line of symmetry, we'll have the same reflected on both sides. So let's see if we can make a shape with a horizontal line of symmetry. So see if the same can be reflected on both sides of the line. To do that, we can look at our corners. So for this corner here, we go two squares down from the line. But if we go two squares up from the line, we get the this point here. And this point isn't on the line, isn't one of the corners. So we can't have a horizontal line of symmetry. Let's see if we can make a shape with a vertical line of symmetry. So this point here, we go three squares to the left of the line. So if we go three squares to the right, we can have a corner here. And then we can just draw two lines to join up our points. And we have a shape which has a line of symmetry because we have the same on both sides. This corner here is one to the left, and this corner, one to the right. This corner here is three to the left, and this corner here, three to the right. And then this corner is on our line of symmetry. Sapna makes up a game using seven cards. Here are the cards. Josh picks a card without looking. If Josh picks an odd number, then Sapna scores a point. If Josh picks an even number, then Josh scores a point. Is this a fair game? Explain how you know. So it's not fair, because remember, odd numbers end in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, and even numbers end in 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0. So 1 is odd, 2 is even, and if we see what's even and what's odd, we can see that there are four odd numbers, but only three even numbers. So Sapna scores on more than half of the cards, so it's not a fair game. Class 6 count how many seeds they find under two trees. They show the data in a graph. How many seeds did they find in week 3 altogether? So we have the number of seeds at the side, and we can see that with each line, we're counting up in tens. Now we want to know the number of seeds in week three, but we can see that we have squares which show oak seeds, and dots which show chestnut seeds. So if we go up from week three, we can see that there were 60 oak seeds, and then if we draw a line across from chestnut seeds, we can see that that's halfway between 40 and 50, so 45. Now we want to know how many altogether, and 60 plus 45 is 105. So they found 105 seeds in week 3 altogether. Now, in how many weeks did they find more than 40 chestnut seeds? So what we can do here is draw a line across from 40, and we want chestnut seeds, which we can see are the black dots. 
So how many black dots do we have above 40? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's 5 weeks. Here are 4 diagrams. On each one, put a tick if it is the net of a cube, put a cross if it is not. So if we look at this diagram here, we do not have the net of a cube. That's because these two faces here will overlap. So when this face folds up, this face here will fold over the top. But then when this face folds up, this face will fold over the top as well. And then we won't have a face that covers this edge here. So we do not have the net of a cube. In this diagram, we do have the net of a cube because this face will fold up. When this face folds up, the face next to it will be able to fold round and cover this edge. These two faces will fold up and then this face will fold over the top. Here we do not have the net of a cube because these two faces will overlap. So if this face is our base, this side will fold up and then this side over the top. But then if this side folds up, this side or this face, I should say, will fold over the top as well. And then we won't have a face covering this edge here. And this diagram here is the net of a cube because when this face folds up, this face will fold around and cover this edge. This face will fold up, this face here will fold over the top, and when this face folds over the top, this face here will be able to fold down and cover this edge. Use a ruler to measure accurately the width of the star from P to Q. Give your answer in millimetres. So we have P here and Q here, so we can take our ruler and make sure that zero on the ruler is lined up at this end of the line. And then if we look to the other end, we can see that we have 12 centimetres and then another seven little lines, another seven millimetres. So that's 12.7 centimetres. But we need to give our answer in millimetres. Because there are 10 millimetres in a centimetre, to change centimetres to millimetres, we can multiply by 10. So that's 127 millimetres. An answer of 126 or 128 will also get you the mark. Now use a protractor angle measurer to measure angle B. So angle B is this angle here. We can line up the protractor so that we have the cross on the point of the angle and then the zero line of the protractor lined up with one of the lines on the angle. So here we can see that we're using the outside scale because that's where the zero is and we have 10, 20 and then another two little lines so that's 22 degrees. 21 and 23 degrees also get you the mark for this question. This pie chart shows how the children in class 6 best like their potatoes cooked. 32 children took part in the survey. For each statement, put a tick if it is correct. So our first statement, 10 children like chips best. Now what I would do here is to draw lines across so that our pie chart is split into equal pieces and then we can see that we have eight pieces all together and two of those pieces are for chips. So two eighths of the children like chips best. There are 32 children so we can find two eighths of 32 and that will tell us how many like chips the best. To find a fraction of a number we divide by the denominator and 32 divided by 8 is 4 and then we take that answer and multiply it by the numerator and 4 times 2 is 8. So 2 eighths of 32 is 8, not 10. So this statement is incorrect. Now 25% of the children like mashed potatoes the best. We can see that the section for mashed 
is two parts out of eight, but a percentage is a fraction with a denominator of 100. So we need to change two eighths into hundredths. But 100 is not in the eight times table. So what we can do here is simplify our fraction first. If we divide both the numerator and denominator by two, we can see that two eighths is the same as one quarter. And we can change quarters into hundredths. 100 is a multiple of four because four times 25 is 100. What we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator as well. One times 25 is 25. So because we know that two eighths is equivalent to 25 hundredths, we know that this statement is correct because a percentage is a fraction with a denominator of 100. Now, one fifth of the children like roast potatoes best. We can see that roast potatoes is this section here, but that's one part out of eight, so one eighth, not one fifth. So this statement is incorrect. And finally, 12 children like jacket potatoes best. We can see that jacket potatoes covers three parts out of eight, so three eighths of our pie chart. And because there are 32 children altogether, we can find three eighths of 32. Remember, we divide denominator and times top. 32 divided by eight is four times three is 12. So this statement is true. Find two square numbers that total 45. So we need to remember that square numbers are what we get when we multiply a number by itself. So one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, five times five is 25, six times six is 36, seven times seven is 49, and so on. But we need numbers that total 45. So we can have 36 and nine, and that gives an answer of 45. And both 36 and nine are square numbers because they're numbers we get from multiplying a number by itself. Calculate 143 times 37. So on our first answer line, we can multiply by seven. Then on our second answer line, multiply by our three tens and then add up our answer lines. So three times seven is 21, so two, one. Four times seven is 28, plus two is 30, so that's three, zero. And one times seven is seven, plus three is 10. Now we can cross out our working, write a zero in our second answer line and multiply by our three tens. So three times three is nine, four times three is 12, so one, two. One times three is three, plus one is four. And if we add up those answers, we get 5,291 as our answer. For each of the four sentences below, put a tick if it is true, put a cross if it is not true. First, a triangle can have two acute angles. So remember, an acute angle is less than 90 degrees or less than a right angle. And a right angle is like the corner of a piece of paper or the corner of this screen. So a triangle can have two acute angles because in this triangle, both of these angles are acute. So our first statement is true. Now, a triangle can have two obtuse angles. That's not true. Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Obtuse angles are more than 90 degrees, so more than a right angle. So if you have two obtuse angles, you have more than 180 degrees. Our third sentence, a triangle can have two parallel sides. 
Remember, parallel sides are lines that would go on forever without ever crossing. But a shape with parallel sides must have at least four sides. There's no way that we can connect parallel lines without making at least four sides. So this statement is false. And finally, we have statement number four. A triangle can have two perpendicular sides. So perpendicular lines are lines which would cross at right angles if we extended them. Lines on a right angle are perpendicular, and we can have a right-angled triangle. So this statement is true. Write these fractions in order of size, starting with the smallest. So we have 3 quarters, 3 fifths, 9 tenths, and 17 twentieths. But to compare fractions, we need the denominators to be the same. So we need to find equivalent fractions. Now 20 is in the 4 times table, it's in the 5 times table, and it's in the 10 times table. So we can find equivalent fractions which have a denominator of 20. To do that, we use multiplication. 4 times 5 is 20, and what we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator as well, and 3 times 5 is 15. Now 5 times 4 is 20, 3 times 4 is 12, and 10 times 2 is 20, 9 times 2 is 18. So that means our smallest fraction is 3 fifths, because that's the same size as 12 twentieths. Then we have 3 quarters, because that's equivalent to 15 twentieths, then 17 twentieths, and our largest fraction is 9 tenths, because that's the same size as 18 twentieths. A and B are two numbers on the number line below. The difference between A and B is 140. Write the values of A and B. So we know that the difference is 140, and to get from A to B, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 lines. So what we can do is divide the difference by 7, because we have 7 jumps to get from A to B, and that tells us that each jump, each line, is a difference of 20. So if we know that this point here is 0, we have 20, 40, 60, and then 20 less than 0 will be minus 20, and then we'll have minus 40, minus 60, and minus 80. So that means A is minus 80, and B is 60. Josh has some tiles. Each tile is 10 centimetres long. Two tiles fitted together are 18 centimetres long. Calculate the length of five tiles fitted together. So we know that one tile is 10 centimetres long, and that means the tile that's fitted together must be an extra 8 centimetres. So this first tile will take up 10 centimetres, and then we'll have 8, 8, 8, and 8. So we can work out the total length by adding 10 and then 4 eighths. 4 times 8 is 32, and if we add that to 10, we get 42 centimetres as the length of 5 tiles fitted together. 